Okay, let's have a look at the second example. This one's a little more complicated. We're trying to simulate a coin toss using the random number generator in LabVIEW. There will be one user input, which will uh, be used to put in the number of tosses in the trial, and the outputs will be a heads and tails indicator, um, which would display the result uh, of each toss, and then a running display of the percentage of heads versus tails will be provided. So just a couple new things in LabVIEW that you're going to see in this. Uh, there are things called structures in LabVIEW, which control the program execution. Uh, as in any programming language, for and while loops are, are, are very useful structures that we use to control the execution of the program. For example, here we see a while loop, and what this i is, that's the loop index. That's what's incremented each time through the loop. And a while loop will run forever until some condition is reached. And this structure includes a little button in the control panel, the front panel, that when you push that button, it stops the execution. A case structure is one in which we have a uh, an icon here that determines which case is executed. So it would be 0, 1, if you have more than two cases, 2, 3, and so on. And then for each condition, you have something that happens in that structure. And if we were to increment to false, that would have a different execution inside. And so there are numbers that are passed into that case structure and values that are passed outside of the case structure. And one more uh, structure we're going to see in LabVIEW uh, we're going to see an element called a shift register. And basically, this would be one shift register, and this would be the other shift register. And basically, what happens is that it keeps, it allows you to pass values, new values back uh, for the next iteration of the loop. So we have initial values for each of those registers, and then the subsequent time through, whatever value is in this register gets passed back to that one, and whatever's in this one gets passed back to this one so that we can keep track and accumulate statistics as we go. Okay, let's have a look at the second example now. We're going to first look at the front panel, and I'll show you how it runs. Uh, first of all, notice that we put in how many coin tosses we want to perform. So we can enter let's say 10, and what we'll see is we'll see this flicker as the number of tails comes up, and then this will be the ratio of tails to the total number of tosses. So hopefully if, if it's going to average out to about 50%, of course, uh, with probability, you never can be sure. So we see here that the ratio does turn out to be 50%, and the last random number that was generated was 0.59. And we'll see this again. Let's change this to 50 and run it again. And so we see the random numbers are changing, and the ratio ends up being 0.44. And it will be different every time. Now let's go to the um, control panel and take a look at what's behind this. Now first of all, I have a, a pal tool palette here that shows the structures. So we see the for loop, the while loop, uh, the case structure, and several other structures here. So those are things that we can play with, um, uh, but you'll be using, uh, in this example, we'll be using the for loop. So in a for loop, we have i equals 0 to, in this case, n minus 1. So n is the number of iterations, and so i always starts at 0. So what we're doing here is we're generating a random number and displaying it. We're rounding that uh, random number to the nearest integer value. And so it's either going to be closer to 0 or 1. And so here we're going to compare it to 0. And we're saying it's tails if it's closer to 0. And if that's true, this is going to be a 1, 
and we're going to add one to um, what we already have. And, and we're initializing this counter at zero. So the zero passes through. This becomes one, and it appears here. And we have one plus uh, uh, one. To, this is divided by, so it's one divided by one is 100% tails. Okay. Then the next time through the counter, this value is also passed back to the, to the counter, so this becomes a 1. And then if it's false, let's say if it's false the next time, then we don't increment, and we simply pass the same value back around. And so the i increments automatically, um, and our ratio would change then. Uh, the new value of the counter... Uh, this is a running counter of how many tails uh, would not get incremented in this case. Okay, so that's just an idea of, of what's happening there. The other uh, structure you'll see here is you'll see a delay time or a wait time. So this allows us to see the light flicker on and off. We're waiting 100 milliseconds. And in fact, we could slow it down if you wanted to see it execute a little bit more slowly. Let's double that to 200 milliseconds. And then when we go to run it, again going back to the front panel, when we run it this time, and let's go back to 10 uh, iterations, so we see it blink a little bit more slowly. Okay, so that gives you an idea of uh, what's in the second example. And again, please feel free to ask any questions at all on it.